the time is 6.40. I'll call the meeting of the Goose Creek Board of Trustees to order. Uh, Mr. Sampson, was this meeting properly posted? Yes, it was. And do we have a quorum? Uh, yes, we do. All right. For the record, everyone is present. Uh, Mr. Chapa, opening exercises, please. Good evening, Mr. President, board members, and Dr. O'Brien. As this is our first board meeting of the summer, the opening exercises for the June 28th board meeting will be led by the board members. We will begin the opening ceremonies with the prayer led by Mr. Sampson and the pledges led by Mr. Cotter. Will everyone please rise? Would everyone bow their heads? Father, first of all, I'd like to thank that we are still here on earth, Father. Father, I also want to send a prayer out to the people who are in those areas that are collapsed building, and we pray that they find whatever and whoever that's under the rubble. Father, thank you for this night, and thank you for everyone who's here. Father, bless each and every one of us when we leave here. Bless our school district, Father. We out for the summer, Father, and bless them that we don't have any more casualties to our students this summer. Bless each and every one of our teachers, faculty, administrators, uh, each and every one of us. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To the flag. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to take this flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Moving on to recognitions and acknowledgments, I would like to go ahead and call Dr. McCall up at this time. Mike got away from me there. Good evening, Mr. President, Board of Trustees, and Dr. O'Brien. Uh, it is my honor to stand before you to receive a donation from ExxonMobil, which is uh, a partner in education for San Jacinto Elementary for over 30 years. Um, back in January of this year, um, I was contacted by Ms. Connie Tilton, who represents ExxonMobil, and she wanted to be involved with the rebuild of San Jacinto Elementary, looking at some learning opportunities uh, for our students, really pushing out their environmentally friendly um, learning spaces outdoors. And so we began to have some conversations, um, and today she is here to present us with a $10,000 check. Um, so Ms. Tilton and Mr. Munoz, the principal of San Jacinto Elementary, please come forward. We are very thankful that even in economic times such as these, you are still partnering with us to make sure our students have awesome learning opportunities. So thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is Dr. Anthony Price. Good evening, board members, President and Dr. O'Brien. We're first gonna look at a short video, Dr. O'Brien, Mr. Clem. We're gonna watch a short video first. One of Goose Creek CISD's best kept secrets is the maintenance department. These 65 plus employees work behind the scenes to ensure that the facilities are well maintained and operate smoothly. 
for our nearly 24,000 students, as well as more than 4,000 staff members. The winter storms in February demonstrated the true commitment and loyalty of these skilled district employees. Putting in more than 10,730 hours, they pre-treated facilities, draining pipes. Following the storms, they spent several days assessing buildings, responding to alarms and alerts, searching for broken water pipes, cracked backflow devices, and damaged boilers, often making emergency repairs when parts were not available. Realizing that the animals at the Agri-Science Center needed food and water, they located food and emptied their own water bottles to allow the students show animals to drink until water could be brought in. Incredibly, the most unselfish thing our employees did was sacrifice making repairs to their own homes to prepare the facilities in Goose Creek CISD for our returning students and staff whose schedules had been turned completely upside down since March 2020 due to COVID-19. While the everyday task of the maintenance department might not seem too exciting, they are critical to our district. Let's take a peek at some of them in action. Thanks to our amazing maintenance department employees for all your hard work and effort. We appreciate you and we're proud of you for keeping things running smoothly all the time so that we can fulfill the mission of our district, developing the whole child. In the maintenance department, we can truly say, here we grow giants. The resolutions that we're going to look at tonight will be for the maintenance department, custodial and grounds, food service, and transportation. These departments are the support mechanism of the district. We support everyone. Resolution for maintenance department. Whereas the Goose Creek CISD maintenance department, with its approximately 65 employees, has served the school district for many years, ensuring that the facilities go well maintained, operating smoothly for the district's nearly 24,000 students, as well as staff members. And whereas the maintenance department under the su supervision of Dr. Anthony Price, Chief Operations Officer Michael Rasmus and Director of Maintenance responded to the district's needs during the winter storms Uri and Biola, which brought freezing temperatures, rain and snow throughout the area. And whereas maintenance employees spent three days prior to storm pre-treating facilities following freeze protocol to drain pipes and prepare for freezing temperatures. And whereas following the freeze, these workers spent several days assessing buildings, searching for screwing water and broken pipes and damages as a result of freezing, as a result of freezing temperatures. And whereas with high demand for a short supply of material, they made emergency repairs using available resources so that facilities could have domestic water until parts were available. And whereas they took on other duties such as feeding animals and emptying their own water bottles in order to provide water for the animals at the Agri-Science Center until water was able to be brought in. And whereas these dedicated workers put in collectively over 10,730 hours devoting time and energy as well as working as a team to assess and repair damage and broken water pipes backflow devices and boilers due to the storms. And whereas they sacrificed making repairs at their own homes to ensure that the district's 35 facilities were functioning 
and whereas the maintenance department also worked to prepare campuses during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, taking on uh, tasks and setting up for desk shields for faculty and staff and students. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Trustees of Goose Creek CISD, do hereby commend the members of the Goose Creek CISD maintenance department for their, uh, <clears throat> for their tremendous job efforts in supporting the district by preparing facilities for the returning students and staff after the winter storm and during the pandemic. It's truly easy to say that here we grow giants. Our maintenance department, any of our maintenance department members, would you come forward? While the other departments are just as important and vital to our district, we, do, we did not put together a video on those. Our next resolution is for the custodial department. Whereas the Goose Creek CISD custodial department has served the school district for many years, ensuring that the facilities are clean and well kept for our nearly 24,000 students, as well as faculty members and staff. Whereas the custodial staff uh, department under the supervision of Dr. Anthony Price, Chief Operations Officer Abel Narvaez, uh, junior director of grounds and custodial responded to the district needs after winter storm jury and viola which brought forth freezing temperatures rain and snow through the area whereas the following whereas following the freeze custodial employees cleaned up several inches of water uh, throughout the uh, district in several buildings whereas the employees whereas these employees also worked to extract water from the uh, shop extract water from shops and rooms and shampoo carpets throughout uh, the district, whereas workers removed collapsed ceiling tiles from the floors, facilities due to damage from the storms, and whereas the custodial department worked extra hours to clean, disinfect, and prepare facilities for the return of students and staff following the freeze, whereas the Goose Creek CIC custodial department also worked tirelessly during the COVID pandemic, 19 pandemic, to keep facilities sanitized and safe and students and staff return to facilities to conduct business of the district. Therefore, be it, be it known, be it resolved, that we, the Board of Trustees of Goose Creek CISD, do hereby commend the Goose Creek CISD Custodial Department for its enormous efforts in supporting the district during the winter storms as well as during the pandemic year. And here, we do grow giants. Custodial staff, would you come up?
resolution for the grounds department, whereas the Goose Creek CISD grounds department has served the school district for many years, ensuring campuses are well maintained for the district's nearly 24,000 students as well as staff members and community. Whereas the grounds department under the supervision of Dr. Anthony Price, Chief Operations Officer, and Ava Norvais, Director of Grounds and Custodial, work to keep the grounds <clears throat> on the, the round campuses and facilities maintained and well kept before and after winter storms Uri and Viola. Whereas grounds department employees shut off irrig irrigation systems, valves, and drain pipes on the ath athletic fields, and whereas following the, the freeze, these workers trim trees, cut back brushes, uh, bushes and brush uh, and plants to remush flower beds and monitor and regrowth the landscaping that was damaged during the freeze. Whereas we kept the, generation, the generator diesel tank filled, removed rodents from facilities and prepared the irrigation systems as needed across the district. Whereas, the dis whereas these dedicated employees spend numerous hours performing tasks over and above their regular work workloads, clean up to clean up all the grounds and all the Goose Creek CISD campuses and facilities as a result of the winter storm URI and the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, be it, be it resolved that we, the Board of Trustees of the Goose Creek CISD, do uh, hereby recommend the m members of the Goose Creek CISD Grounds Department for their enormous efforts in supporting the district and ensuring, it, ensuring the campuses and facilities were prepared for student return and faculty return after the winter storm and during the pandemic crisis. Here we grow giants. Resolution for Nutrition Services Department. Whereas the Goose Creek CISD Nutrition Services Department has served the district, the school district for many years, ensuring that the district's nearly 24,000 students are well fed as well as staff and students. Uh, whereas the Nutrition Service Department, under the supervision of Dr. Anthony Price, Chief Operations Officer, and Natalie Edwards, Director, serves 30,000 meals per day, including breakfast, lunch, and after school, a la carte, and catering on a regular school day, whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic beginning March 2020, since students did not return to school after spring break, nutrition services employees began serving curbside meals up to six, at up to 16 locations for the next week to ensure the families receive assistance with food. And whereas the staff members work to include treats and surprises in the bag for students, uh, for students with their food and meals, to help, bring, to help brighten their day during this unprecedented time. And whereas nutritional services staff members also following the safety protocol with gloves and masks and hand sanitizer chose to provide these meals for families knowing that they would, they would come in contact with many, with many members of the community, thus increasing their own risk of contracting COVID-19. And whereas following these winter storms and freeze in February, these workers came came on Sundays to ensure that they would have meals prepared for Monday to serve the uh, students for the next day. And whereas catering services at facilities as well as meetings and place, sorry, as well as special events always included top quality food items and services. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Trustees of Goose Creek CISD, do hereby recommend the employees of Goose Creek CISD Nutrition Service Department for their enormous efforts in supporting the district here we grow giants. Nutrition services. And, and they won the award for the most people coming tonight.
Resolution for Transportation Department. Whereas the Goose Creek CISD Transportation Department, with its approximately 350 employees, has served the school district for many years, ensuring that students are transported to and from school safely. Whereas the Transportation Department employees focused on safety and for, of our students and staff undergoing extensive local and state training, and whereas during a normal year, the Transportation Department compiles 3.4 million miles per year, transporting 14,000 to 15,000 students per day to and from, as well as 3,000 field trips scattered throughout the year. Whereas the Transportation Department, under the supervision of Dr. Anthony Price, Chief Operations Officer Rick Waltershaw, Director of Transportation and Special Projects, responded to the district's needs during the COVID-19 pandemic, assisting with temperature checks at facilities, delivering PPE, handing out food at campuses, and when, and when students return to school, taking them home if they felt ill, taking them to their homes if they felt ill. And whereas drivers often help keep the community safe by reporting traffic issues, any uh, stray animals, and other problems within the community. Whereas the progress of the Transportation Department has um, been made known by the fact that some of our employees, there's a transportation conference going on right now, so our transportation members are at that conference right now, but we have Patricia Decody, who is the Assistant Transportation Director. She was awarded at this conference, it's a statewide conference, Person of the Year for the Texas Association of Pupil Transp Transportation, that's PAPT, Person of the Year. Brandy Ward, one of our drivers, has been recognized as the PAPT Driver of the Year, and Teresa Mendoza, one of our operations supervisors, was awarded scholarship money for the PAPT. Remember, this is a statewide convention, and we had three outstanding people who were awarded uh, across the state. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Trustees of Goose Creek CISD, do, recommend, do hereby recommend the employees of Goose Creek CISD Transportation Department for their enormous efforts in supporting the district in enormous ways. The Transportation Department is obvious that we, that here we grow giants. And we're gonna ask Abel to come up. Abel, Abel was the Assistant Director of Transportation before I pulled him over. Thank you, board members, for your time this evening. We just wanted to let you know, as well, we, as well as we let people know across the district, that we are here to support any and everyone within our district. Thank you. to the next item on our agenda, which is a public hearing concerning the proposed budget and the tax rate. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. O'Brien. So this evening uh, is the culmination of all the hard work that's been done uh, since early spring, um, even uh, before I got here in, Feb in February. And um, tonight is the night that we will propose the budget to you all for adoption. Um, most of this is repetition, as it should be when you get to budget adoption day. And um, I will go through this um, brief slideshow and just an overview of the protocol 
this evening would be I'll present this and then the public here the public will have an opportunity to comment and then in action items is where you will actually um, have the motion to adopt all right so again these are the same budget objectives that we uh, started with and have carried throughout the budget preparation process um, namely uh, keeping the bond rating at AAA or higher maintaining a superior financial rating from the state and ensuring a sufficient operating reserve of at least three months, which we have. And then the same budget assumptions, we're assuming the 1% growth, certified values are to be received in um, July, and um, we expect just slightly higher numbers in um, state and local funding due to the fact that we are projecting the 1% increase. Uh, some of the main highlights that um, we have worked very hard to make happen are number one, the um, well, the 2.5% uh, general pay increase as requested and incorporated into this adopted budget. Also, we had the minimum uh, bus driver pay increase to $20 an hour. Um, a little bit of an update on ESSER. We did receive late last week approval of our notice of grant award, which is very exciting for ESSER 2. That's $20 million, a little over $20 million. So um, that is very exciting. Now, do we have any money yet? No, but we do have the, the NOGA, which is notice of grant award, these, all these acronyms. So um, we're very excited about that. And that um, will pertain to uh, defraying some of that budget deficit that we have for this fiscal year, not the one we're going to adopt. So um, that is wonderful just to have that to go um, in our fund balance and bolster our financial position. All right, so this is what you were, these are the legally adopted budgets that are required by statute, um, general fund, school nutrition and debt service, and this is also in proper form as required to be adopted by function. So you see a little bit, the numbers and in totality are exactly what um, we had presented to you in um, meetings past. And um, so this is the actual format that has to be adopted in. And you'll see here, if you look at general fund, um, which is the first column there, we do have that $12.7 million plan deficit um, we do have um, $47 million in ESSER three funds that we're still working on to get um, our application submitted in the month of July for ESSER three. ESSER three is a little bit more work than ESSER two was, but we are working on that. And Lee Ginger McKay is doing a fabulous job, and we're we're getting very close to being able to submit that application. So. That said, um, we have to adopt based on the information that we have right now, knowing that this is probably pretty close to worst case, worst case scenario, but um, until we actually have the money in the bank, we don't wanna make too many uh, predictions here, but we can certainly say that we think we're gonna get the funds. Uh, school nutrition, uh, we also have a um, estimated fund balance increase slightly after last year's losses due to COVID. Um, it's very good to build up those reserves again. And then the debt service is also slightly um, adding to fund balance for this coming fiscal year. So all in all, we have estimated fund balances in the aggregate of 168, 116 million, excuse me, almost $117 million for all funds. So that is going to be, this, this particular slide right here is what will actually be adopted in the action item. Did anyone have any questions on this particular slide? Okay. This is not a legally adopted budget, but it's presented for transparency and completeness for uh, the board members uh, to um, know exactly where we stand on our capital improvement projects. Um, we do anticipate, these, these straddle multiple years in, in, in many cases due to the nature of the projects and, and the, um, the size of the projects. And um, we just are showing here for this particular year that we're coming up on, we anticipate having a, an allocated fund balance in CIP, which is a it's basically a snapshot in time. It's certainly gonna change um, as projects change as you get further down the road with them. But in any event, we have almost $2 million as the snapshot in time to um, move into 21-22 school year. 
Okay, we will not be adopting the tax rate tonight because tax rates will be adopted in the month of September after we receive our certified values, which comes uh, on July 25th. And so once we get those, we will have uh, we will have the definitive tax rates. But what we are estimating, and we're and we're pretty um, confident that these tax rates are going to be what we're stating here, although they could change. Um, MNO tax rate is going to remain the same at a dollar and 1.0436, and INS tax rate is going to be uh, presented at 0 0.3250, and that is an increase of uh, two, a little over two cents, 0 0.0275. Now, if you see um, the note number three down at the bottom, we communicated to taxpayers that we were going to have a 0.37689 debt service tax rate for this particular year. So we were able to time the market you know, with favorable interest rates um, and be able to save taxpayers dollars and, and maximize our INS fund usage. So that's that's great news. And um, so overall, our tax rate for 21-22 will be 1.3686, but again, we won't adopt until September. Any questions on that? Okay, so uh, the next step is to, uh, once we get past this evening and adoption of the budget, then we will adopt the tax rate September 13th. And that concludes the presentation. Any questions or comments from the audience as well at this time? Thank you, Ms. Clark. At this time, we'll close the public hearing and move on to uh, citizens' participation. And somewhere I have a script about that. Thank you. Did I stop this poem last week? <laughs> I can do that. And did I have a slide on that? No, no, no. Or Ms. Garcia put it up. Citizens' participation is the time that the board will hear public concerns or public comments from those who have properly signed up to address the board. At regular board meetings, the board shall permit public comment regardless of whether the topic is an item on the agenda posted with notice of the meeting. General public comment is limited to no more than 30 minutes per meeting. At all other board meetings, public comment should be limited to open session items on the agenda posted with notice of the meeting. Each speaker is reminded that he or she is limited in his or her presentation to a maximum of three minutes, which can further uh, be limited or reduced by the presiding officer, and that he or she should respect confidentiality concerns and refrain from attacking the personal character of any individual student, staff member, or board member in addressing concerns or comments. Pursuant to state law and board policy DE legal, the board cannot consider or take action on concerns at this meeting unless they pertain to an item on the posted agenda for this meeting. Any deliberation or decision on an item that is not posted for consideration at this meeting shall be limited to a proposal to place the subject on the agenda of a future meeting. Uh, we have one speaker tonight, Ms. Kim Kostick. And Ms. Kostick, you know the rules well. Mr. Sampson will time you and give you a one-minute warning and call time at the end of three minutes. Mr. Sampson, I actually had my timer up here too, so you can just go. All right. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. O'Brien. No matter what, you'll never matter. These were the words written on my daughter's arm that she wrote in eighth grade fifth period class on September 18th, 2019 with permanent marker. This was her suicide note. According to Washington State Healthy Youth Survey, nearly 25% of 10th graders who reported being bullied also reported having made a suicide attempt in the past 12 months. And according to the study by Secret Services National Threat Assessment Center, which is one of the most comprehensive reviews of schools attacks since the Columbine shooting of 1999, an overwhelming majority of school shootings have been linked to harassment or bullying to the shooter. The Goose Creek Anti-Bullying Committee is a giant step in the right direction to honor those that have succumbed to the pain 
let us continue to honor them in our efforts as we move forward. I'm going to use the rest of my time allowed, which is about a minute and 45 seconds, so we may reflect the children that have taken their own lives, the lives that have been taken from them, and those that believe this world would be better off without their lives. One minute. They all matter, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kostek. Moving forward on the agenda now, we'll consider the minutes from the June 7, 2021 regular board meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Cotter and a second from Mr. Renteria that the minutes from the June 7th meeting be approved. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Being seven for and none against, the motion passes. Uh, Dr. O'Brien. This evening we do have a superintendent's report. We have Dr. McCall will be coming up to present anti-bullying committee update along with Dr. Precious in the middle. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. President, Board of Trustees, and Dr. O'Brien. Um, it is our, our certainly our honor to sit in front of you this evening to talk about the Anti-Bullying Committee uh, update. Uh, we received our charge and we've been hard at work over the past couple of weeks to be sure to uh, bring you a proposal this evening and kind of let you know where we are and where we're going to be going in the future. And so I'm accompanied here with uh, Dr. Precious Remenick, who is our Director of Social Emotional Learning and Student Wellness, and she will take the first part of our presentation. Okay, so the first thing that we uh, did was we came up with a purpose and a desired outcome of the committee. So as you can see on the screen, our purpose of the Anti-Bullying Committee is to provide a safe and secure learning environment for all students and staff so that students can interact and thrive at school, in, commu in the community, and later on in the workplace. So we have a couple of strategies here. We want to, first of all, increase an awareness on bullying, cyberbullying, personal health and safety topics, and we're going to do that by by marketing monthly district um, reporting procedures for bullying and cyberbullying. The supports that are available at each campus will also be highlighted through a campus spotlight. We will also, again, collect annual information through surveys and needs assessments from our students, staff, and parents that's going to address those topics as well. Most importantly, we're going to utilize student voice by incorporating whatever those surveys and needs assessments say into developing groups for students 
individual counseling for students, student workshops, those guidance lessons that will take place in the classroom, along with staff and family engagement topics as well. And that will occur every grading cycle. So how are we going to measure this to ensure that we're meeting those needs? We're going to report what those surveys are saying. We're going to report back what the needs assessments results are, along with our campus and district behavior data. We're going to utilize the check and review, which was discussed last time, and the campuses are going to report back what are their guidance lessons, what are the topics that are needed for the student workshops and groups, again, parent and staff engagement. I spoke about the campus spotlight presentations, and during those, a campus each month will come forward. They will talk about their data, and they're going to talk about how they are addressing needs at their campus so that we can see what it looks like at all of our campuses. We're going to report the data from the website and our social media sites as well to see how many hits are we getting, are we engaging um, our community with this information, how much are they participating with this. And then again, um, lastly, the Campus Counseling Advisory Council and the Instructional Leadership Teams, we're going to take a look at their agendas and their minutes. So what I'm sharing or what you're seeing right now is just some proposed meeting dates uh, that we're looking to get started with in the fall of this upcoming school year. Um, during the summer, it's been a lot of preparation. There's gonna be some orientation meetings. Uh, we also have to put the information out to the community um, in order to get those volunteers that will participate on the committee uh, so that we can really get a jump start on this for our fall semester. These are just proposals, of course. Once we have our committee, we will certainly take these dates and times to them uh, just to be sure that it will work. Um, and of course, if it does not, we will make adjustments accordingly. Uh, we thought that meeting once a month, especially at the start of this committee, would be ideal. Um, I think it increases awareness and accountability for all involved uh, for us to check in on a monthly basis and make sure that as a school district, we are doing what we said we were going to do. So that's just a list of the dates. And once again, the time is flexible just depending on the needs of our committee members once selected. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I see the dates. Where's the location of these meetings? So we've yet to uh, find a location for the meetings. We're just putting the dates out there at this time, but we are looking for locations in the district. Of course, that'll be convenient. Okay. Yes, sir. So committee members, this was probably um, the most challenging part of our pre-work because we really wanted to uh, think about who are those educational stakeholders that need to be involved. And it was more so um, every time we thought that we had the correct number, we would always go back and add more. Um, and so right now we're looking at approximately 30 members that will serve on this committee. And this just kind of gives you a breakdown of who those individuals um, are that we are looking for to serve. Uh, we're looking for six students, rising 7th and 11th grade students, two from each feeder pattern. And the reason we chose those specific grades, and of course we're open for feedback, is because a lot of the topics that we may be discussing may be a bit uh, much for elementary or pre-K students. And so we really want to make sure that the students who are in the room can handle the level of conversations that we will be having. Uh, we will have one parent at large, which is Ms. Costick. Uh, we will have six parents, one from um, six parents total, but we will have one from each feeder pattern, and then of course we will continue to grow from there. Three teachers, one from each feeder pattern. We want to be sure our campus administrators are there as well. Counselors and student wellness interventionists need to be a part of this. Uh, we are requesting that one board member be a part of this committee, so I'll let you all discuss that. Um, and then we have eight district employees that will be there as needed through the ad hoc committee members, and then two facilitators, which will be Dr. Remenick and myself. So who are those committee members uh, that will be there or on a as needed basis? Of course, our chief of police, um, our director of safe and secure schools, director of student services, marketing, um, our coordinator for healthy uh, community schools, um, coordinator for behavior and mental health, and then we will also have, because we're talking about a lot of cyberbullying and things of that nature, we want to make sure that we have someone there from the technology department, and then also considering that students spend a great deal of time on the bus, and we know that sometimes these issues may start on the bus before they even get to our campus, and so having someone from the transportation department there um, will also be beneficial. 
The individuals that you see here uh, mostly are the individuals that did a lot of this pre-work to be sure that we came to you uh, with a holistic picture of what this committee should look like and make sure that it's a committee of action. And that's, uh, that's the work that we were charged to do before coming to you all. As stated before, the two facilitators will be myself and, and Dr. Remenick, and we will be there on a consistent basis, of course. So then we wanted to take it a step further to think about what our proposed meeting agendas could potentially be. What will be components of those meeting agendas? Um, of course, we wanna include any sort of celebrations that are happening, especially as we get into the work. Um, when we're beginning to see the fruits of the labor, we wanna be sure that we keep each other motivated through that process. Uh, we will talk about our norms and meeting expectations to make sure that they remain productive. Um, as Dr. Remenick spoke about, we will have a campus spotlight presentation uh, that can be based on needs or the data that we receive from that particular campus to get them in front of the committee uh, to not only share what they're doing, share what's working, share what's not working, and open themselves up to feedback from the committee. Uh, we will also look at, as Dr. Remenick stated, any behavioral data that's out there, um, upcoming monthly campaign topics and lessons that are gonna be taking place to make sure that once again, as a school district, we are accountable to the members of the committee. And then we want, by this being an action committee, action committee, we want to um, put out there upcoming opportunities for outreach. So if there are any type of programs that are going on on particular campuses where we would like for committee members to be present to see the work in action, uh, then we will certainly have those opportunities for them to participate with the campus. So our next steps, uh, July 1st through the 15th, we will open our committee application window. And of course that will go out through a lot of different mediums in communication, district communication. Uh, we wanna allow two weeks for people to ask any questions, express interest, um, and go through that application process. July 19th through the 22nd will be a committee selected and notification timeline, so that way everyone will know whether or not they're on the committee. Um, and then from there, we will of course communicate what the expectations are to make sure they understand uh, what this committee is about and what we've been charged to do. We will spend some time in late July, early August, um, working with our principals to really talk about what this program is and what the expectations are at the campus level and how we will need their support. Um, and they will also designate someone on their campus, more than likely an assistant principal to be the point of contact um, as we're doing this work. And then September through May, we will have our monthly committee meetings. And of course, we will provide any sort of updated reports to the board upon request. That's all we have for you today. Are there any questions um, for us that we can answer? On the campus, uh, the principals are gonna be involved with this also, or just counselors or teachers or what? Yes, sir, so we left it as campus administrators. Okay. Um, so that way we could have a, a little bit of flexibility for the campus principals understanding uh, a lot of times your assistant principals are the ones that deal with you know, student um, behavior, whether it's positive or concerns. Um, and so a lot of principals may designate an assistant principal to be the point of contact. And even on the committee, we just left it as campus administrator, so it could be both. My biggest concern, I guess, would be the buy-in from that administrator, you know, because you're saying the meetings are five to six or six thirty or whatever. Yes, sir. I would really hope the person that we select or the principal select buys into the program about bullying on their campus and not just saying, "Oh wow, I got to go to this meeting," you know. Right. Uh, but that's what it's going to be important if they buy into it and they are on the campus. They really understand what you all are trying to push to them about the bullying on your campus. Yes, sir. And we've had some conversations with our principals to make them aware that this is coming, so it shouldn't be a surprise, yeah. but it's a matter of expectations at this point, Mr. Sampson. You know, just saying this is what we are doing and we're, we're gonna need your support in order to make sure that it happens on your campus. Um, and so we believe that we can find some principals, of course, that'll certainly be interested in serving on the committee but as far as district-wide, that's part of that monthly check-in piece to make sure that we're doing what we say we're gonna do on those campuses. Okay, because I don't want us to get started and then all of a sudden we fade out. Yes, sir. You know, I've been with on programs where you start out, okay, we're gonna do this, 
and then next thing you know, it's a fade point, and then you start losing people who are interested in keeping it going. So yes, that's sir. my concern, you know. And we certainly don't want that to be the case. And if you set systems up to make sure that it's being monitored and increases accountability for everyone, and it's just the right thing to do. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little um, concerned that we don't have a dedicated rep from each campus as dedicated to the committee. I, I think right. that, you know, you can say feeder pattern, we're going to have one from each feeder pattern. What does that mean? Three? Does that mean six? Does that mean five, ten? I, I mean, that's right. because we have our five high school campuses, not yes, three, and then we have our six junior highs, and that's not a whole lot more, and it seems to me that like one liaison from each of those campuses right. at minimum, um, I would like to see some elementary campus involvement at that level as well, and I think that the same thing for our students. Uh, okay. Maybe not parents, but a student rep, student council president, or you know, captain of some club or team or whatever, active student from each one of those campuses that can work with that administrator to bring that back to their campus. Because that's really where we're looking to see the effects of the committee's work. And that's how you're gonna get your action from whatever the committee comes up with, and right. your feedback. Um, I, I certainly like the idea of the campus spotlights, you know, giving them the opportunity to say, hey, this is what we've taken back, this is what we've been doing on right. our campus, right. and we've got positive result on this, or we've noticed that there's a issue in this area for, you know, that we need to focus on. So I know that we like to limit numbers on committees because they get too big, they get out of hand, but at the same time, um, <clears throat> I think it's important to make sure that you have representation that's going to um, propel that action onto their campus. And, and, you know, the elementary level, maybe just a couple that work through the feeder patterns, you know, utilize them. But uh, at the secondary level, I think it's really important to involve each specific campus in order to get your buy-in. Um, parents, you know, I don't you can have six, you can do with feeder pattern or not with feeder pattern or what have you. I know it's been very effective in the past when you have principals or assistant principals recommend a parent from their campus that seems to be very active and tied into things that go on. Um, and, and then, of course, the last thing, you, you said one little thing. You right. said district ad hoc committee members as needed. Yes, ma'am. So they're needed, needed. Okay, they're needed every month. Okay, got it. They're needed every month. You know, okay. in order for this to truly have an action piece to it and to truly buy into the whole district as a plan for changing the culture that our students and staff work, exist, live under day to day, um, you know, it has to it has to be important to all of these ad hoc committee members. They're all necessary in the process. So they're all necessary at the meetings. Um, I understand that, you know, things happen. We don't make every meeting, I try. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, a commitment from them is just as important as a commitment from every other person on this list. So. Um, I don't think that'll be an issue. Just the work that we've done so far, they are invested in this work, so. Right, right, well, and, and, I, and I think you're right. I, I hope you're right. I think everybody here is, is all certainly interested in making sure yes, that we make an impact um, on this type of a issue um, because it, you know, is, we, we need to take it more seriously in order for the students to take it more seriously. Um, what may seem frivolous fun, which is damaging bullying to someone else, and in order to change that and make people understand that, we, we have to have buy-in from everyone so um, but the rest of it I think it looks looks like a good proposed plan is this the charter that you're presenting here no or, we're not okay. at that we're not okay. at that we're phase. not there yet. especially right. we got some feedback so we'll be working on some additional things perfect perfect yes, okay Th that's my opinion y'all I like the direction it's headed Sounds good. What happened, Ms. Dela Cruz? 
You sure? I was waiting for you to be up here. <laughs> oh, you, you're good. <laughs> to Ms. Wood's point, I think it's uh, for administration to uh, finding that balance uh, between a team that's um, large enough to be comprehensive to include everyone and small enough to be an effective um, meeting. Uh, for example, I've called every student council member individually and every seat taken. And it's not as effective to have 100 people in the room having a meeting as it is to have 18. I just see top three officers come up and say, well, if we have that meeting, it's a much more but you're contingent upon those that attend the meeting to go out and deliver the word. So to your point, who's going to go to the campus and sit front row, for example, if we're talking about who would come? So we'll have to look at that and just find that, that perfect balance for this committee because, it, as you stated, it's the board, I know your feelings, but it's a very important thing that we're doing. So we're taking a huge step to formalize this, and uh, we want to get it right. Um, but we want to find that, that, that sweet spot with balance of the numbers versus the message that we're trying to get across. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, McCall. Thank I, you I just have one more much. tiny question. One more tiny question. I noticed on the application process and all, how are we reaching the students to find which ones would would be, are, is, are we putting it out to the whole campus? Are we asking uh, certain leaders on the campus to submit names of students? Or? So that was gonna be where we really relied on our campus leadership teams to help us find students, especially this time of year because it's summer break. I would go to student government. I think that that's where you- Student council, yes sir. No, very good. Thank you. Can I just one, one thing, sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> just with that, just being working with students, sometimes you don't, you don't want those student government leaders, though. You want some kids that are outliers. So I think, you know, maybe reaching out to them in the student government, but also reaching out to the um, administrators, like y'all said, to find those leaders in other areas who may not be just out there out everywhere. There. You know, but they're still leaders on your campus. Right. So. And, and, and to that leaders. point, the APs might be able to contact them. Thank you. Okay. We're going to have all the schools there before it's all said and done. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. All right. Moving forward in our agenda, uh, action item 8A, Dr. O'Brien. Administration at this time would call upon the board to consider the adoption of the 2021 2022 proposed budget for the general fund, debt service, and school nutrition funds as presented earlier this evening in the public hearing. We make a motion to approve. I'll second, second the motion. I have a motion from Mr. Cotter and a second from Mrs. Woods that we adopt the budgets as proposed. Any discussion? Question. Is that the one that we're saying the deficit is what, 11 before the? Before the estimate, yes. Okay. yes. All right, okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Seeing seven for and none against, the motion passes. Uh, action item 8B, Dr. O'Brien. Yes, for the board's consideration this evening, we have the consent agenda. Prior to listing my, the consent agenda, I would like to turn the board's attention to uh, number 8B11, as I'll be pulling that item uh, for further uh, consideration in the near future. So if you could strike that one, I'll go down our consent agenda that the administration is prepared to present to you this evening. Number one, donation from ExxonMobil. Please accept that. <laughs> Number two, proposed 2021-2022 student code of conduct. Number three, become an authorized full-time Texas Virtual School Network online school. Number four, seek a new campus identif identification number for the Goose Creek Virtual Academy. Number five, request a waiver to the Texas Education Agency to approve full-day funding for virtual education. Number six, waiver from the Texas Virtual School Network course review process. Number seven, two innovative courses for high school special education students. Number eight, select job order contracting, or JOC, as the delivery method and to approve the selection of delegate authority to the superintendent or designee to negotiate and approve contracts and subsequent amendments with various vendors for various capital improvement projects and to take all necessary and related actions. Number nine, change order as submitted by and to amend the contract with Comex Corp to 
increase the contract amount of the CPE renovation to construction lab at Sterling High School. Number 10, increase the overall project budget. Um, so A, the Early Learning Central um, Facility Project, and B, Robotics Facility. Strike 11. Number 12, renewal of property and liability insurance coverage for the district. Number 13, delinquent ad valorem tax collection contract. Number 14, tax refunds. And number 15, budget amendment. Administration at this time would ask the board to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, would anyone like to pull an item or ask any questions? Yeah, number 8B, I guess, increase overall project budget. 10, 10, and 10 B, I guess, uh -huh. and change order on number B9, I guess that's. You want to pull those or you have questions? I got questions. Okay. And would this pull uh, those two, the change order and the. So pull 9 and 10 B? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I think it is, yeah. 9 and 10 B. Yeah, those two. I have a question and hopefully it's just a quick one. On um, on number, it, number three, become an authorized full-time Texas Virtual School Network online school. Do we have the option to, um, like if, I know special sessions coming up and if things change, do we have to, does this mean we have to stick with TXVSN, or would we have an option to do our own thing? We would have the option uh, if legislation is passed approving full time right. uh, funding. Okay. Uh, this is um, a fail safe. Right. Okay. Put it in place now because it's what we do have at our um, okay. disposal now is to apply for the waiver with TEA. And this was generated from a conference call with the commissioner um, for TEA with all superintendents in the state saying apply for the waiver. Okay. Uh, as a safe sale for the legislation not passing in the future. Okay. And we, if do, we are going into special session, I think the board is aware, July yeah. 8th, and we're hopeful that that will come forth and be uh, not required to have the waiver, but it be actually mm -hmm. done by, by law. Okay, perfect. And if we do have to use do TS, TXVSN this year, can we go back and change it then if something is passed in the future? We will. Okay. Somebody care to make a motion? Um, did we get Mr. Sampson's question? We pulled items oh, okay, 9 pulled and them. 10B. I'll move to approve items 1 through 8 and 12 through 15. Okay. Are we pulling 10A and B or just 10B? Yeah, the 10, I'm trying to, I made notes on it, so I'm trying to okay. see if I'm. Oh, yeah, 10 A and okay. then 10 B, okay. I guess that's And 10. I have a motion from Mrs. Guy and a second from Mrs. Barack Timms that we approve items 1 through 8 and 12 through 15 as presented. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Anyone opposed? Just making sure. Okay, seven four, none against. Motion passes. Back to item nine, the change order, Mr. Sampson. Yeah, I think this was the one. Let me go. I'm trying to get my notes back to together. On the change order, uh, on number nine, amend the contract. Um, one of them was a half a million change order, and the other one was two million change order. I apologize. Currently, we only have, we're only submitting one change order, and the other two are increased in the overall budget of the project. Why the, did the, the this, change was order? It short? The change order specifically was the CTE construction lab. Right. That was a phased project that began um, last spring into the summer. Mm -hmm. We did um, 
the district changed the scope a little bit on that. Okay. And we went to the CBOC committee at our last meeting um, and brought forward the information, and they've also endorsed um, the increase in the budget. So the one of them, is that overall $2 million for both of them or just $2 million for that particular project? Are you asking about the ELA, sir? Well, the Early Learning Academy, since we're on question number, we're on uh -huh. right now. Right. We're on nine. Wait a minute, let me go to nine. Um, it's the same thing. Okay. On number nine, you, uh, the lab started out uh, at 4.4 million. And well, it started out from 3.4 million up to 4. Point, and I think that was a half a million. Yes, that's correct. And that was soft money. Uh, was it a change? It, and it had to do with an increase in scope of work okay. on behalf of the district that we requested, and also some material increase costs. With, so the from district last year. Yes, asked about changing the scope of the project. Because we did that project in, in two phases, we completed the first phase last summer, and okay. then um, then we designed the second part of that uh, oh, throughout the school year, and then um, it, we got an actual bid for that amount. So now Ms. we Stanton, have to actually- another um, um, factor regarding that change order had to do with the fact that the, what was called the ninth grade camp, so the East Annex campus mm -hmm. at Sterling, uh, originally housed only one academy. Mm -hmm. Now that it houses two academies, um, both the Health Science Academy and the Teacher Academy, the PPE classrooms that were in that annex have been moved and relocated, so it's expanding the scope of this CPE project, if I'm Yes, that's correct. correct. That's exactly correct. I'm so going one step back uh -huh. further than what you mentioned. I'm going back to the origin and the reason for the uh, edit. So in the beginning, we said we was going to do this project. And then we came along and changed to now and it increased the amount of money that we have to spend on the change order. In other words, to make more, we needed more funds to finish the project. Yes, sir. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Now, was that the half a million or was that? That, that was half a million, yes, sir. Okay. Now, on the other project, which I think went from two million from uh, I guess it was the early learning center. Yes. And it went from one amount to like two million more dollars. Now, why was the increase so uh, high on that? What it was a we decided to do something different. Uh, so I can speak to both A and B. I think you're talking about the Early Learning Academy Central and also the Robotics Lab. Right. On both of those particular projects, those were estimates that we had. Um, um, Ms. Uh, Clark spoke of our capital improvement project budgets, and right. we've had those sitting there for a long time. Okay. Those projects were not designed until uh, this past year, and we're now getting um, actual bids on those projects, and so those numbers were not aligned with that um, it wasn't anything to do with the change of scope on those. Um, they were just insufficiently budgeted. And so we um, were just coming to ask, and that's not just the construction, that's an overall budget for everything so related to that project. Did we have to go back and bid out again? No, sir. No, no we're, good. we're good to go after. If, if these two um, overall budgets are approved, um, we're good on um, all of the contracts with the contractor and every expense related to both of these projects will be covered. So the existing contract doesn't have to go out to be it again on this project no, because sir. even though it's two million dollars more? No sir, um, this, this particular project for the ELA is a uh, is construction manager at risk, and so we contracted with a contractor, and we bid two different phases of work. The first one was civil work, and we've contracted that amount. It was about approximately $2 million, and now we've gotten real numbers for the building portion, the second portion For the portion actual of construction. The, correct, sir, uh -huh, for the building portion. To answer your, mm -hmm. your question, Mr. Sampson, you're spot on that if we're unhappy with the cost increase, we could go out to bid again. 
the fact of the matter is we do not project that another bid would come in any differently than the bids we currently have in place. Um, and then there's also a concern with receiving materials in a timely manner to, to actually complete the construction. Welcome to COVID's cost of living increase. Yeah. Yeah. There are severe delays on, on materials currently that we're experiencing. So how long have we known about this? Is this just one of those ones that's um, it really, just to It really began now? slowly at the beginning of, of this year. It didn't hit us until the beginning of this year. Yeah. And then with the freeze and those material cost issues, and then as the world began to open up again, um, that supply for those materials as other jobs started started yeah. back up. Um, and then manufacturing is just beginning to catch up on, on manufacturing those materials that we require. It was a lot, a lot of different factors that led to this. Yeah, I just, yeah, that's a lot. Yes, that's, sir. That's two and a half million dollars more to our budget for building that we should have. I, I will say that it's um, it's currently covered in our capital improvement project projects. budgets. Yes, okay. sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it is what it is, I guess. So. We've said that quite a bit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. over the last six months. Any other questions concerning 9 or 10? I'll re uh, request a motion concerning items 9 and 10. I move that we accept the nine uh, action item D, 9, and 10, A, and B as presented. Second. I have a motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Mr. Renteria that we approve action items 8, B, 9, and 10 as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, likewise. I see six for and one against. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for Please clarifying don't. everything. Uh, next item is future board agenda items trainings and board meetings uh, listed on the agenda is to reschedule the Labor Day September 6, 2021 regular board meeting and I would judge from Ms. Clark's uh, budget calendar that she's requesting September 13th but we can consider other dates I'm sure. Is that a deadline for the tax rate or I mean okay that, okay Everybody check calendars for uh, September, not Labor Day. Right, the, the 6th is Monday. Right. Is that is a month with only one meeting scheduled so far, so. Correct. Is everybody okay with the 13th? Yes, sir. I see nods and all. All right, so. Uh, Let's have a, can we have a motion to move the September 6th meeting to September 13th? September, so September 13th at 630. 630. Let's just stick with 630 because that so seems moved. to be working for everyone. All right. I heard a slew of seconds. Who wants to take credit for that? <laughs> All right. Nobody wants to second the motion. No. Oh, I'll second the okay. motion. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just pick someone. I heard Tiffany first. So I have a motion from Mr. Renteria and a second from Mrs. Guy to move the September 6th meeting to September 13th, 2021 at 630. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. Um, I would also like you to check calendars. Our next regular, regularly scheduled meeting is... July, help me out here, I'm going the wrong way. July the, the, the other July, the July the 6th, and I would like to ask of if we could. Year? What year is this? Uh, 20, it's still 2021, 
July the, the 6th? The, the rub with the 5th is that's the observation of July the 4th. So mm -hmm. we will okay, take so the day. Okay, so you're trying to move it to the 6th or no, did no, we no, already no. do that? No, 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 it's already scheduled for the 6th. I'm asking you to look at July the 19th and see if we can schedule a special board meeting for the sole purpose of discussing the superintendent's summative evaluation contract and uh, like that. That's all. Cool. That's a no. All right. Uh, alternate date. It would be an alternate date. And I'll throw out there that I will be gone the week of the 12th. So July is hard. I'm trying to avoid the six being one of those 6:30 to 1 a.m. meetings. But we actually we have a very light agenda schedule set so far. I mean, that's what you said about yeah. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you just take your red that's pen to the meeting with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. I, I do carry my red pen to the meeting. Yes. Um, or do we just want to? Do it all on the sixth and call it a call it a day. We don't have a choice. We're going to do it all on the sixth. Okay. Or well, we just do it all on the sixth, and if we don't get it all done, then we can visit and we another have, date. We, we in have July. done that before as well. All right. So we'll just stick with the sixth and see where it takes us. Yes. Okay. Um, any other agenda items, board training, board meetings that anyone else would like to discuss? SLI is available for 30 days, so if you didn't get to visit that, it's going to be posted and available for the next 30 days. And just a reminder, I think Ms. Garcia has already informed the board, but the uh, Texas Education Code training will not occur. We're serving as a proof of site in December for reasons that uh, right. Ms. Garcia has explained to all board members for the Texas Education Code update. Um, but we do have the opportunity to have another new board member orientation that will probably occur sometime in the month of February. Just awesome. So you all are prepared. Do, do we, we have, have a, a December date? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. Do we have a date? Okay. Why don't you send us that? December, that would be maybe the 15th. No, December who? Anything else concerning future trainings or dates? Is there any way to make my computer not go to sleep, sleep. so fast? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I make a motion. <laughs> well, I need a shorter password. All right. Moving on in the agenda, the board will now recess into closed session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas o Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Sections 551.071-072-073-074-075-076-082-083-084-084, and 087. No action will be taken while the board is in closed session. Time is 8 p.m. 9 p.m. and we will reconvene into open session. No decisions were made during the closed session. Uh, we will now do consideration of personnel. Uh, Dr. O'Brien. Yes, administration would at this time recommend that the board approve elections and accept resignations and retirements as presented. I'll move to approve. I have a motion from Mrs. Guy and a second from Mrs. Woods that we approve elections and resignations, retirements as presented. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. The following positions will be presented by administration by position. Uh, student wellness interventionist, Crystal English for Horace Mann, Jr. I'll move to approve. I have a motion from Mrs. Guy and a second from Mrs. Woods to approve 3A, F3A. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven for and none against, the motion passes. The next administrative election would be for educational diagnosticians. 
administration recommends Leslie Stoker, Jennifer Street, and Aaron Stripling as diagnosticians. I'll second. I have a motion from Mrs. Barat Timms and a second from Mrs. Guy to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and zero against, motion passes. And then to approve the selection of speech language pathologist, Teresa Harrison. I'll move to approve. Second. I have a motion from Mrs. Guy and a second from Mrs. Barat Timms to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. And then administrative election for licensed specialist in school psychology, Maricel Velez Melgin. I'll move to approve. I'll second. I have a motion from Mrs. Guy and a second from Mrs. Woods to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. The next administrative position recommended is for the election of a counselor at Gentry Junior High. That would be uh, Kimberly Enix. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Mr. Renteria to approve the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. Administration recommends the election of ELA specialist K-12, Kenya Coffey. English Language Arts Instructional Specialist K-12. through Move to approve. Second. A motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Ms. Renteria to approve the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. The next administrative recommendation is Coordinator of Special Education Assessment, Angela Juarez. Move to approve. I'll second. I uh, have a motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Mrs. Guy to approve the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. And the next approve the selection of student support administrators as follows. Michelle Williams at Travis Elementary and er Ernesto Benitez at Peter Bow Junior School. Move to approve. I have a motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Mr. Renteria to approve the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. Administration now recommends for administrative position associate director of mathematics, Angela Cornelius. Move to approve. I'll second. A motion from Mrs. Woods and a second from Mrs. Guy to approve the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and none against, the motion passes. The final administrative recommendation for the evening is for the Director of Communications, Ms. Kristen Cathy. Move to approve. I have a motion from Mr. Cotter and a second from Mrs. Barat Timms to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Seeing seven, four, and zero against, the motion passes. And just for the record, item I was uh, omitted intentionally. A motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> I make a I'll motion make a to adjourn <laughs> the All meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion, uh, meeting adjourned at 8.54 p.m. I removed it. You're just showing off. Is that four minutes?